I'm in the third year of using this sprayer that I treated myself to. It's got a 30-foot boom on it. And you can see the little bit of spray left in the bottom. Best guess is somewhere between six and seven gallons. I calibrated that for a delivery of 24 gallons to the acre. I like to get good coverage. Um, everybody's different. That's my that's my calibration. That's what I've been going with for years. So it's 24 gallons to the acre, <clears throat> quart of uh, glyphosate to the acre, and a quart of Liberty to the acre. That's 32 ounces each. <clears throat> and then I had uh, AMS in there, and I put prefix in it. Prefix, uh, I found that I can use it over the top of soybeans. It will give me a residual and hold the weeds back for eh, four or five weeks. So anyhow, that little bit left over there, I had guesstimated about 48 gallons in the tank and I probably was closer to 50 and that little bit was left over. So, loving this sprayer. You can get over some land pretty quick with uh, 30 foot boom section there. Uh, that little thing I had <clears throat> that I used for years, uh, about 11 and a half foot wide boom on it. So this is a lot, 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 lot better, a lot better. <laughs> Let's go up there and take a look in the field and see how that's coming along this morning. What you're looking at <clears throat> is the first field I planted this year. Planted this back on uh, April the 25th. <clears throat> And I had issues with the planter putting seed in the ground too deep. But <clears throat> the chain seemed to have stayed on during the planting of this field. And I kept the drive wheels down on the ground where they're supposed to be. So they turned the machine and make it plant seed. <clears throat> and I got a fairly decent stand here. Now, I had made a comment uh, in a previous video <clears throat> that I wished I hadn't have planted so soon. What I actually should have said was, I wish I hadn't have started planting until I figured out how to control the seed depth on that John Deere 71 flex planter. Well, I fought my way through that battle. Thank you very much to the people who uh, <coughs> sent me some information and helped me through that. Uh, I'm standing here a little bit shocked. Let's see, I said I sprayed this on Saturday, and today's Monday, the 23rd, and I've actually got <clears throat> a real good sign of kill going on out here. A whole lot more going on here than I actually thought I would have. Now, what happened in this spot here, the seed was too deep on the soybean, and uh, by the time the soybeans got up, the spots in this field that got weed pressure, weed problems, too much weed seed in the soil, they'd pop back up. And that row right there was full of that nasty, stinking water hemp, pigweed, palma amaranth stuff. That stuff's hard to kill. But I have learned through the years that if you hit it young and small, like this is, uh, you get a kill. I mean, you get a root kill. This thing will not re-sprout. You let this stuff get some height on it, and you can fight it all year. You can make it look like you killed it, and it'll sprout new growth out of itself. It, I guess what happens is it gets enough of a root down in the ground that you just can't kill it. But I've got uh, <clears throat> a lot of morning glory in this field. Good kill on that. Liberty works great on morning glory. In fact, Liberty just works great. And now that we got corn in the program here, that's helping out a lot with the weed management. But I'm just walking across the spot out here where uh, this water hemp, I call it water hemp, pigweed, palma amaranth, it's all the same to me. It's something I don't want. <laughs> it's annoying. It's a royal pain. But I got a real good kill. So I'm really, really, really pleased with this. I didn't expect to see this this far along. Now, <clears throat> I see something over here. I'll walk a little faster to get to it so I can make my point about what happens when weeds get up too big. And I really like this row spacing. Uh, little Ford gets in here. I was planting behind the grain drill. I was on 15 inch row. 
and the way Cousin Scott made it work out uh, with the planter, we're on 16 inch rows and that gets my tires through here without so much overrun. But anyhow, the first one I'm coming to, all right, you see that weed right there? That's uh, lamb's quarter and it's up taller than the bean. It's got a kill, it's gonna die, but it's not as shriveled up as the small stuff. <clears throat> and here's one over here. <clears throat> it's lamb's quarter and, and we got a kill going on there. But <clears throat> I walked out here, I'm here, I'm going to do this. There, you're out of the game, you're over. You don't play anymore here. <clears throat> but all in all, <clears throat> this, uh, I had to wait for it to grow out of it. And like for example, these two rows right here, that row right there, you can look down that way and see it's taller, thicker. Look at the row right beside it. That's one of the units that was planting seed way too deep. So I've had to wait for this to, to catch up. If you get the seed in the right depth and uniform, uh, you don't have to watch your crop act like this. <coughs> now, here's another one of those rows, the same situation. Look at that one right there, thick and fat. This one actually got some missing plants. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it was too deep. And this spot right here, they just didn't germinate and come out. But it was a whole lot worse last year with me not understanding how to use that planter and thinking I could control seed depth by picking the thing up. Boy, that was so stupid. I look back on that and just laugh. If you pick the drive wheels up off the ground, how are you gonna turn the hopper to put the seed in? Yeah, <laughs> learned that the hard way. But we're getting there, and I expect next year to be even better. Uh, got the seed depth right. I'm gonna figure out something about monitoring those chains to see when they fall off or come loose. But this is an excellent kill out here. I'm, I'm delighted. Uh, day's 23rd. This stuff has not been in the ground a month yet. Need two more days for that. Like I said, it was planted on the 25th of April. Yeah, that uh, Liberty is a good product. You just got to get it on the weeds when they're small. Don't think you're going to come out here and control a weed patch that uh, these things have already gotten up over a foot tall. Not going to happen. It don't work that way. Yep. Pretty happy with this. All right, let's go look at something else. All right, this is what I call the world's smallest soybean field. <clears throat> Actually, I've used this as a test plot as I was testing different herbicides and working up the uh, knowledge about fertilizer. <clears throat> All right, this little patch is a victim of the uh, uneven seed depth. You've got a row there missing. And there's a few plants in it trying to come along. Got a row there missing a few plants trying to come along and then you see down there thick and pretty is when when this happens you know you, you just gotta let it grow out of it but anyhow this is a, a morning glory patch what i'm looking at here is mostly morning glory there was a bad infestation here last year yep it's back <clears throat> Uh, cockleberry, a bunch of it right in there and there. But that little dab that's in the tank sprayer will do this little spot. I mean, pass down, pass back, and it's done. In fact, I'll have to turn off one of the sections of the boom. Yeah, that thing's nice. It's got uh, the control valve. There's three sections in that boom. You run all three of them at the same time, you're spraying 30 foot wide but you can control it to where you can turn off the one you want to turn off. It's pretty neat. But yeah, I'm gonna take that last little bit of spray and come and tell all of this uh, 
Morning Glory and Cocoa Berry that it's not welcome here. <laughs> All right.